Welcome back to Judgment Decision Making. I'm Dr. Padilla. Today, we are going to talk about anchors, which is one of my favorite topics. Okay, let's begin with a question. How much does this t-shirt cost? I want you to decide for yourself. We're gonna do lots of these games, so feel free to grab a pencil and paper and write down what you think this t-shirt costs. Okay, the actual cost of this t-shirt is $320. I bet you didn't guess that, unless you happen to know of the company. This is the Row, which I actually talked about a few lectures back, which is a uh, company owned by the Olsen twins. Now, most people don't guess $320 because they see a t-shirt and they think of the t-shirts that they've seen in their mind, just a plain white t-shirt, and they remember the price of those t-shirts. And they assume that this one is in some way related to that price, uh, but it, it is not. Let's look at a few more examples. What is the actual value of this jacket? Again, decide for yourself. Do you think it's 300? Do you think it's a little more or less than that? How about now? You've probably seen this many times in stores where there's this massive price drop. The truth is, is the lower price is usually just the regular old price, but you see the difference and you think it's a massive value that you're getting. So when you think of the actual value of this jacket here, you're probably going to say somewhere between 300 to 600. But for this one, you might say 300 or a little bit less. You see, this is the effect of an anchor where you're given a number that influences your estimate of value. And it can be entirely unrelated to the actual value of a product. The anchoring effect is when people consider a particular value or an unknown quantity before estimating that quantity. Now there's two different mechanisms that produce anchoring effect, one for each system, and I'll give you some examples of both. The first one is a deliberate process of adjustment, which is associated with type two processing, and the other one is priming that's associated with type one. Okay, well the first one we'll talk about is anchoring as adjustment. It's essentially where you start from an, the anchoring number and assess whether it is too high or too low and gradually adjust your estimate by moving from the anchor. And this is a deliberate cognitive process. You kind of have to effortfully do it. So I'm gonna give you some examples here. Okay, did President Lincoln die before or after 1675? Again, write down your answer and we'll get back to it in just a second. So first decide, did he def die before or after 1675? And what year did he die? Okay, got your answer? We'll do one more. Was Alice's, Inventure, Alice's Adventures in Wonderland published before or after 1991? And what year was it published? And this is the title for um, Alice in Wonderland. Okay, got your answer? Don't pause and Google it. It's not what this is about. You just have to guess. All right. So both of these two things, President Lincoln died in 1865 and Alice in Wonderland was also published in 1865. So I'd be willing to wager some amount of money that for the first one, for President Lincoln's death, that you guessed some year around 1865 or lower. The anchor that I gave you was 1675. And what tends to happen in your mind is you start with that anchor and you have to adjust up or down based on if you think it was uh, more recent or, or further in the past than 1675. So from 1675, you're kind of adding on years. And the tricky part is you don't quite know how high to go unless you know when, when Lincoln died. So the estimates tend to be lower. And this is what I find in class when I do this with large auditori auditoriums of students that the vast majority of students have their estimates lower than 1865. I know that if it was truly random, we should see 50% of people guessing below 
1865 and 50% above. So when we see the trend of people guessing below 1865, then we know that there is a bias due to the anchor that was provided. Okay, same thing for Alice in Wonderland, but opposite. You see 1991, just 20 years ago, and you have to think, was this a new book or an old book? You know, if you, if you know anything about literature, you'd know that it's fairly old, but you might not know the exact date. If you don't know about lit literature, you'd have to just go off my estimate and say, I don't know. <laughs> you know it's going to be somewhere much higher than 1865. And that's, again, what we find in these large auditoriums of students. But this is a type two process because you're actively trying to adjust your estimate from the anchor. And note, as in these cases, the anchors don't have to have any meaning necessarily or any, uh, they don't have to provide any information in addition to um, any valuable information, let's say. Okay, and this is probably the process going on with this example. I didn't give you a number for, you know, what this t-shirt costs, but a number was automatically triggered in your mind. So you anchored yourself and uh, you had to kind of raise up or down based on the anchor that you originally thought of for this t-shirt. And note that in classes, I have students break up into groups and try to anchor each other. And so this example was, um, from one of those groups last year. They were able to anchor each other and have people guess hundreds of dollars off by using this example here. Okay, so let's do another example for type one processing. Okay, I'm going to break you all on the internet up into two groups. So I want you to play along and, um, and uh, do what you're told. <laughs> so play along with this game. I want you to think of a number between 1 and 10. This isn't the anchor. This is just me breaking you up into groups, okay? Think of a number between 1 and 10. Got it? If it's even, you're going to be in one group. And if it's odd, you're going to be in another group, okay? So if it is even, I want you to read the next slide. If you are in an odd group, I want you to close your eyes now. And I will tell you when you can open your eyes. Okay, close your eyes if you are an odd number group. Don't Google this answer. Okay, even group, I want you to close your eyes. And now odd number group, go ahead and open your eyes. Don't Google it. Okay, both groups, you can open your eyes. Hopefully you remembered the number. Maybe you wrote it down, which would be ideal. Now I want you to answer one more question. Both groups, you can keep your eyes open. What is the price of this 1995 Toyota Camry? What do you think? Okay. It's a fast judgment. Again, don't Google it. All right, so here are the different questions that each group was presented with. The even number group was given the question, how far is it from Merced, California to Denver, Colorado in miles? And I'm assuming they may, you may or may not have known <laughs> where those two places were, uh, but you had to make some estimate quickly. The odd number group was asked, how many flights leave SFO, San Francisco airport, per day in a normal year? And then you both were asked, what is the price of the 1995 Toyota Camry? Okay, so here's the right answers. For Merced to, California, Merced to Denver, it's 1,196 miles. For the flights per day, it's around 1,204. And the price of the Toyota Camry is $1,200. Okay, so I would be willing to make an uh, educated guess that the people in the even group made estimates ranging here. Why do I think that? Because when you imagine the distance from some location in California to Colorado, it probably seems pretty far. You have to go across two states to get from California to Colorado. And, you know, it, it is, seems like a very large number. So I don't know what number you actually imagined, but it was probably fairly large. 
And when I do this in class, what I find is people in this group generally think that the car is from $1,000 to 3500 somewhere in the range. And note there's outliers. So you might know about Toyota Camrys and not get the right answer or get the right answer, um, but not within this range. But on average, this is what we tend to see, people making these estimates. Now for the odd group, we tend to see lower estimates because they were anchored by a question that triggered a smaller number. Unless you know something about flights, you might assume a smaller number than 1,200 flights go out of SFO. When I was first thinking of this, you know, I guess maybe 250 to 300 flights would go out of SFO. Um, and so if you think of those numbers as smaller numbers, that's your anchor. And so your estimates about the Toyota Camry would also be lower. And this is what I tend to find in large classes that students range from around $300 to $1,300 for this Toyota Camry. And this honestly has massive implications for everything that we purchase. So anytime you see a price tag on something, you are already primed. You have lost the game. So what I would encourage you to do, particularly when you're getting high priced items or you're going to shop for something with a large markup, is decide before you go, what is the value that you associate with the product? If you are going to go buy a car, before you look up the Kelly Blue Book, decide for yourself what is the value to you of that car. Before you go diamond ring shopping, decide what is the value to you and anchor yourself before you let someone else do it for you. Because the truth is, especially for you know the wedding band, that's just a band in that picture. That's not a diamond ring. It's just the band and the pills. The actual material cost to produce those projects is so small. For the pills, they were sold for $1 in 2009 meaning that the actual price was somewhere close to 25 cents for the materials to produce that pill, but it was sold for $750 in 2015, right? So you, you have to not be persuaded by the sticker price and decide for yourself what the value of something is before you go shopping. Okay, summary here. Anchoring is when people are biased by a value when considering another value. And we've learned that there's two different mechanisms that produce an anchoring effect, one for each system. System two is the deliberate process of adjustment, up or down, and system one involves this priming effect that we just talked about. <laughs> <laughs>